Next on Worcester News tonight, the search for the school committee continues as the public gets a chance to meet with the candidates for superintendent. And Crusaders fans cheer on their team as Holy Cross looks to punch its ticket to the big dance. Good evening, thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McCone. The Holy Cross Crusaders are dancing tonight. The men's basketball team completing an improbable run to a Patriot League championship tonight. So for the first time in nine years, Holy Cross is going back to the NCAA tournament. March Madness is already underway for college basketball fans here in the city. Crusaders finishing off the improbable run to the Patriot League championship tonight. Holy Cross was the nine seed in the tournament. They hadn't won a road game in the conference until the tournament started. We found Holy Cross fans soaking in the madness tonight at Buffalo Wild Wings in Shrewsbury. They cheered their team to the championship game and with the win, HC pitch, uh, punches its ticket to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2007. Well, I definitely think it was a roller coaster, but they got it going when it counted most. And we have an unstoppable future right now. We're going in the right direction, and we are hot at the time that we need to be. I mean, I, I'm always impressed with these guys, especially because I know a lot of them personally, and I see how hard they work, and I see the hours they put in the gym. So when they have a season like this, and they're at the Patriot League Championship, it's no surprise. I see how much they put in the off season, so pretty good. You know, it's, it's always just cool when Holy Cross you know, as a smaller school gets to this level in any, you know, athletic arena. So it's it's awesome to see us, you know, on, uh, you know, CBS and, you know, doing well. And yeah, it's just exciting. And Kevin Shea will have complete highlights coming up in sports. Also tonight, the final step in the interview process for the next superintendent of Worcester Public Schools. All of the candidates taking part in a meet and greet with the public at Doherty High School Wednesday. The candidates, Snorback Avenue School Principal Carrie Allen, South High Principal Maureen Benenda, Doherty Teacher Carrie Mulcahy, and Interim Superintendent Marco Rodriguez, all going through interviews with the school committee at City Hall earlier this week. Tonight gave the public an opportunity to interact with the candidates and ask them questions they may have. I think it's really important because the public doesn't have the opportunity like we do a lot of times to build these relationships. So I think it's really important that they feel confident in the four candidates that we've selected so far. A final decision will be made on Monday. The temperatures were in the 70s today. Many central Massachusetts businesses are benefiting from the warm weather. Businesses we spoke with uh, say after a cold winter, it's nice to have a burst of warm air. Our Brittany Schaefer spent the day outside today and has more. The temperatures hit the mid 70s in central Massachusetts, making Wednesday the warmest day of 2016 thus far. Green Hill Golf Course in Worcester opened this weekend, more than a month earlier than last year. And Wednesday, the course was full. We're extremely busy. All of our tee times are booked from 8 o'clock until 4. Ranger Ernie Boss says out of a total 70 golf carts they have available, only 10 were left at noon. If you're a golfer, you, this is what you look this is what you love. Yep, you love to uh, get out here on a day like today. This is all gravy, golfing in March like this. We come out, try to get a little early golf. It's, it's spring, March, 70 degrees. <laughs> it's a great day. Brian Desitel took advantage of the summer-like temperatures and says he knows a few golfers out on the course who conveniently had a sick day today. Desitel says today is a far cry from what he was doing last year. I'm not home fixing my snowblower. I'm out here swinging the golf club. In Whitensville, West End Creamery opened their ice cream stand this week, hoping to take full advantage of crowds out enjoying the sun. This year, obviously, much earlier. Uh, last year was the end of March. And this year, of course, uh, March 8th, so we're excited about the warm weather. West End makes their own ice cream and has 65 flavors to choose from. The shop had a line of customers waiting within minutes of opening today. We're getting ice cream at West End. Last year, it was, you know, it snowed a lot during like this month, and now it's going from 30 to 70, so we're trying to enjoy the hot weather. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A wild accident on the Mass Pike in Central Mass tonight. Take a look at this. A tractor trailer rolled over on a Mass Turnpike on-ramp in Auburn and landed on top of a pickup truck. The tractor trailer driver was trapped in the cab of his truck. Fire officials managed to free him. He's at UMass Memorial Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The driver of the pickup truck freed himself and, believe it or not, was not injured. 
This accident did make the evening commute even longer, though. Well, two Millbury uh, police officers are on paid administrative leave. Both were placed on leave in December. According to the Worcester District Attorney's Office, the two officers are accused of taking a firearm from the armory at the Millbury Police Department. A report filed by the department says Officer Anthony Bellevue and Officer Robert Gahan Jr. took a gun handed in by a civilian during the gun buyback program. According to the District Attorney's Office, charges have not been filed in the case. A former Salmon Pond Mall worker is now charged in two separate sexual assaults. Worcester police say Paul Menard of North Brookfield is a suspect in 1998 rape in Worcester. He was first arrested back in February. At that time, Menard faced multiple charges, including one count of rape. Authorities later interviewed a victim of a 1998 sexual assault. Based on that interview, Menard was additionally charged with two counts of rape of a child. Menard was arraigned Monday and is being held on $50,000 bail. The investigation is ongoing. An apartment building fire overnight claims the lives of two animals and displaces three. The Worcester family is crediting their working fire alarms for saving their lives. Our Patricia Nicholas spoke to the family today and has more. I opened the door and my husband said, come out, let's go, there's fire. And then the smoke cover us. Marie Regis and her family came back to what was left of their apartment Wednesday afternoon. Regis says they all made it out safely, but a late night fire destroyed everything inside and it killed her two cats. I, I, I'm sad, very sad for my cats. Thank God we are safe, but my cats, I'm sad for them. Regis says she lived in the Lincoln Square Village community for more than 20 years. She and her family just recently moved into this apartment. Neighbors say they are sad to see a tragedy like this happen to the family. It's a good community, it's quiet, there's hardly no bad kids or nothing. And, uh, you know, we appreciate of the neighborhood that we live in here. Andrew Duclos lives close by. He says he heard the fire trucks late last night and wants to help the Regis family any way he can. My sister gets out of work. We're going to go to Target and help them out with a little something with donation towards the cause because they don't have probably nobody and their families like from out of the country. Regis says she credits the fire alarm in their quick actions for saving her and her family's lives. If that didn't ring, we would be burned. Patricia Nicholas, Worcester News Tonight. Worcester police have cited the owner and the driver of the vehicle. They say hit two people back in February. Investigators had found the suspect's vehicle and located the owner, 41-year-old Ruben Cardona. Police say 46-year-old Iris Velasquez was the driver of the car. She did not have an active license. Both Cardona and Velasquez were cited and will be arraigned at a later date. A 58-year-old woman and a 60-year-old male were hit by the car. The two were treated for injuries sustained in the accident. We're hearing from parents and the superintendent of the Leicester schools today after emotional exchanges at last night's school committee meeting. Some parents in town say they want more discipline in the schools to protect their children. Artie Madison has the latest on this story. It's an issue that has the attention of parents and school officials in Leicester. I was a little disturbed to hear about it. I hope something comes of it. I mean, I haven't had any issues with my son so so far. They used to do bullying classes. I know when my my son went there. If the, you know, if that's what, part of what's going on. At last night's school board meeting, emotions ran high as several parents urged the school to take action and discipline students. Superintendent Judy Paolucci acknowledged they've dealt with issues at Memorial School and at the middle school, but says suspending students isn't the best solution. We are working on a number of things. It is not as simple as, as sending them out, and I think that's been uh, what's been projected as the answer. Pelucci wouldn't say specifically what the problems are. Several parents we spoke with say most of them have to do with bullying. One way the school is trying to deal with the issue is adding a board-certified behavioral analyst to the staff. We want to address students' behavior and teach them how to behave better. The parents who are calling for a resource officer want the students punished. Um, and and that's, that's two very different objectives. Pelucci says the school is looking at several ways to deal with problem students moving forward. She adds she understands parents' concerns and is working with staff on the school district's code of conduct. We've got to stick together, we've got to move forward, and we've got to do the right thing for kids. Andy Madison, 